So I decided I would make um, some short videos on edible wild plants. Uh, there's a little bee friend. Um, but the first one I wanted to talk about is borage. Borage um, is a what most people call a weed, uh, but it's very tasty. The flowers, let's move in here. Uh, the flowers have a very light cucumber taste and can be combined with other flowers uh, and other herbs to make a really wonderful tea. Uh, it has really good medicinal properties. I won't go into them right now, but you can uh, feel free, please, to look them up. And uh, again, it's borage. And here are the leaves. The leaves are, this is kind of a small plant, but the leaves can be very big, get very big, and the borage can grow up to, oh, I would say about four feet tall. And uh, again, the, the flowers, you can just pick them off, just like that, and eat them. And like I said, they make, have a really good cucumber taste, and a lot of times people, back in the old days, uh, used to make jams and jellies with borage. Um, and so this is our first plant, which is borage. And so I'm going to turn this off, walk around, and show you the second one. The second plant that I want to talk about is pennyroyal. Pennyroyal is a great ground cover. It's in the mint family. Uh, a lot of people consider it a weed. Um, and as you can see here, um, it will put out roots and pretty much take over an area. Again, it's something that people, you know, consider a weed. Um, a penny royal has a very, very strong scent. If you take penny royal and uh, steep it in hot water, put it in a spray bottle, it's one of the best insect repellents that's ever been made. Also, uh, again, back in the old days, uh, when women were having um, monthly issues, uh, they would take penny royal and it causes their uh, monthly issues. Uh, to become more regular. Uh, it's really good to have, again, like I said, it's good to uh, steep in really hot water and you can spray it on children, dogs. You can infuse it with olive oil, warm olive oil, and um, put it on your pets and on yourself to keep away pretty much any bug that you can think of. You can also spray your tent with it to keep out deer flies, mosquitoes, things like that, and it keeps fleas and ticks off yourself and dogs and your children. Doesn't matter if you get it in your eyes or in your mouth, it won't it won't hurt you at all. And I'll turn this off again and go find a, another really great plant. Here we have nasturums. Nasturums, a lot of people use them just because they're pretty flowers, but um, most people don't realize that you can eat those as well. Um, the flowers are very, very, very tasty. They're quite pretty. And again, you just pinch the flowers off. You can put them in salads. Um, I like to put them in tea as well with the borage or salads. It has a very distinct flavor. Uh, almost sweet, but it's got a little peppery bite to it. Sure is good, though. Here we have lavender. Uh, lavender is grown um, in pretty much every place in the world. Uh, it is used, you can use it for teas. It makes a very calm, soothing, warm tea or a cold tea. The um, flowers and the leaves can also be put in what they call dream pillows to help um, children or, um, or adults fall asleep easier. It's been used off and on for years and years and years uh, in mental institutions uh, to calm patients. And you can also use this, uh, the flowers and the leaves, uh, by taking them and putting them in warm olive oil or grapeseed oil or jojoba oil and 
it is really good to put on your skin. Um, it also helps eczema. Um, one of the best herbs I've found to help eczema. And um, you can also just make a rinse with it for your hair. It makes your hair very, very shiny and uh, brings out highlights. And it also helps when combined with this herb, sage. This is broadleaf sage. Uh, combined with that, it stimulates hair growth. You just make a, um, a tea, I guess you could say, out of it. Uh, let it cool. Uh, put it in an old, um, like a mason jar or an old shampoo bottle or something. And um, when you're finished shampooing your hair, you just put a bit of it and rub it into your scalp. And it does actually really, really work. Uh, for promoting hair growth. So there again we have your broadleaf sage and then we have lavender so you get two for one today. Okay gonna turn it off again and we're gonna go find another one. Now this is burdock root. This is probably one of the most hated plants ever. Um, burdock as you can see the leaves are really really big but burdock root can be used like dandelion root. Uh, you can roast it, uh, put it in teas, and uh, it's really good for your digestive system. It's a blood purifier and just an overall really, really good invasive weed, I guess you could say. Um, the roots can grow as big around as your wrist and go down three or four feet and you just um, dig it up uh, cut the root off let the root dry then you can take a carrot peeler and peel off the outside skin put it in the oven and roast it it's very 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 good and then you can uh, chop it up and put it in teas um, and uh, again it's just I can't stress how wonderful burdock is and once you put one plant in the ground you will never be able to get rid of it and it will grow forever and ever so it's good if you're gonna grow some for personal use to put it in a pot um, because again it will spread and well let me just show you <laughs> we have some there we have some here we have some here we have some here, and here is the actual burdock flower, which is really quite pretty, I think. Um, but it turns into burrs and will stick to your clothes, and it's really a pain. And so again, this is burdock, and the part that you use is the root. Here we have comfrey, which again, everyone considers an a weed and a nuisance but I personally this is one of my very 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 favorite weeds uh, comfrey is very good to eat very nutritious again full of antioxidants uh, you can cook it like greens um, you can also use it for uh, you can take the leaves um, the stems the roots the whole thing if you pull it up and pull it down and make a fantastic wonderful compost tea for your garden and for your well hello there's a blue jay talking to us but um, it makes a very good compost tea um, and again it's very uh, it spreads um, and once you get comfrey it's like burdock uh, you can't get rid of it so again if you're gonna grow it for personal use either prepare a patch for it like we did here or grow it in a planter outside um, and again you can eat the, the leaves um, you can also dry it and put it in tea it's very good for colds I'm just I, I, I can't stress at the nutrients and the, the antibiotics um, excuse me not antibiotics but antioxidants uh, in comfrey and it, it's really it's really quite tasty raw or cooked in greens like greens 
and here is a uh, raspberry. Raspberry, believe it or not, you can eat the leaves. Um, you can also use them in teas. Once again, it's it's very, very, very nutritious. You can put them in salads. Um, you can make a tea from them, and uh, it's good for not just the berries, which are excellent, but also for um, it's a very good medicinal herb, and it's very tasty. The last plant that I'll do right now, sorry I'm not very good at making videos, this is my first instructional video, but uh, I hope you get some use out of it anyway. But this is Mallow. Mallow is another one of my favorites. Um, the flowers again can be used in salads, teas, um, the leaves are very nutritious, and you can use those as well. Uh, in, in salads and a lot of these are are um, the flowers are edible and so are the leaves and they really do if you combine them together it just makes a really good blood purifier and a whole body tonic um, helps keeps colds and flus things like that away sore throats upper respiratory can, uh, infections um, Pretty much, if you can combine a lot of these herbs and weeds that I have showed you in this video, um, and drink the tea, and eat them in salads and as greens, you will be a very, very, very healthy person. And it's also good to know about these in case you're ever camping, or out in the wilderness, or hiking. Um, I learned a lot when I was hiking the Appalachian Trail about these um, flowers and <clears throat> excuse me and uh, weeds that everybody calls weeds and how nutritional they are for you and it can really help you out a lot when you're hiking and if uh, to supplement uh, the food that you brought with you um, and again um, I would really like to make more videos in hopes that uh, people will become more aware of how important these so-called weeds are and how good they are for us and I promise the next one that I make will be a little bit better and I'll try not to stutter so much but anyway hope you enjoyed it and thanks so much for watching